You know, I'm not gonna lie, I'm gonna miss that gilf. But with that said, <laughs> hello everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another one of our weekly, the world's finest assassin gets reincarnated in another world as an aristocrat. Oh, that needs a shorter title. Welcome to our discussion video on episode two, Deal of Reincarnation. But before we get to the video proper, quick reminder if you haven't done so yet, to hit that subscribe button, ring that bell, set notifications to all, let all of AniTube know that you're here. And without further ado, Let's go ahead and jump right into this, shall we? And like I said, I'm gonna miss the MC's old old body. I'm not gonna lie, the 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 hot granddad look was really working for him. Um, and I we've seen him in the flash forward, you know, like he becomes like he, he looks fine, right? He looks like generic anime boy, but like that old but mm, mm, like I've I've seen some people in the comments of last video say like. Am I the only one who's like kind of into him as like an older dude? And I'm like, no, 100% me as well. I don't know how old he's supposed to be. My guess is like late 50s uh, by the time we see him in uh, in like his old assassin body. And like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that works for me. Uh, he's like a silver fox. I'm, I'm going to miss that silver fox, something fierce. But we do actually see him like begin his uh, sort of ascent or descent, I suppose, depending. Uh, into this fantasy world, right? We we even hear the the goddess character give it uh, a sort of like RPG spin, where she explains that it's sort of like playing an RPG, right? Like the way that uh, he's going to be diving into this world is essentially like when you restart a game on New Game Plus, right? Where you get to keep all of your experience from the previous life that you had and all of your old XP and all your old skills. So all of those are still going with him. He still remembers being an assassin. He still remembers all the skills that he had, and he still has a lot of his old strength. But he is getting a new body, which means like he's going to be able to do sort of different things this go round. Um, and I like that we actually see him sort of like um, build his own character. Like we sort of see him make this. Like he is told that like the hero gets like I think it's like thirty. Uh, S rank uh, skills and then like uh, the rest are all A rank and it's like god damn right because I believe they go all the way through uh, S, S rank A rank B rank C rank D rank right and our character our main character who we later get uh, find out is going to be named uh, Lug uh, Lug Luge I'm going to say Luge because Lug sounds weird Lugi we're gonna call him Luge. So Luge gets like, um, the Luge v. Britannia gets a, gets five skills, one from each, right? So he can take one S rank, one A rank, etc. And we see him sort of like build up his character. The only thing that we don't know, like the only card that we don't know much about is whatever he picked for D rank because he's going through and he's like, okay, this will help me with this. This will help me with this. And we see like him building the character and then we get to D rank and he's like, Wait, why is this skill here? Wow, the gods really must be blind, right? And it's funny because she even remarks on that. Like the goddess even seems surprised by how sort of bland his skills are. And he's like, what is that supposed to mean? She's like, nothing. It's if you picked all like the strongest skills, I'd be kind of disappointed. Uh, I'm just sort of surprised that they all seem so plain. And it's funny, like, cause she's not bummed out. She's just curious. And honestly, she kind of reminded me of like a game dev. Like, you know, like when uh, players start to break a game, the developers are always kind of surprised by that because they're just not sure what to make of that, right? Like seeing like regular players just find ways to break their game is sort of the whole reason you go through stuff like QA testing. So seeing the goddess sort of be surprised by this was funny, right? Like I thought it was re uh, a really sort of interesting spin on things. Honestly, the, the goddess herself sort of like does give me very sus vibes you know like especially when we see like just these little faces she makes and stuff like that she is very sus um she's a sussy baka if you will but um i do think that it was interesting to sort of display her as almost like a game dev being shocked at the ways that the players are playing their own game and not expecting it and the mc again who we later learn, learn his name luge uh will eventually sort of likely break the game quote unquote i do think that his dynamic with the hero is going to be something that the goddess just wasn't expecting. Um, especially since, like, we have this moment with him where he's talking about how he remembers having emotions for the first time. 
right? Like, he hadn't felt anything for so long because he's just this, like, weapon of of this organization who was literally just made and like he was essentially born and bred to be an assassin so all he ever really felt was pride in his work and that was it and then for the first time in his life he felt a surge of emotions for what feels like the first time and it was just as he was dying and what he felt was regret and it really filled him with like frustration so all he felt was just pretty much anger at being betrayed and it was the first rush of emotion uh in <laughs> in years uh, if not his entire life. And it does remind me of uh, Xemnas in Kingdom Hearts. I won't say which game, just for the sake of spoilers, but like, um, I love the line where it's like, my first surge of emotion in years, and it's loneliness. <laughs> Having a heart is just pain. <laughs> That's all it reminded me of. Um, but I will say like, it, it did make the MC just, I don't know, I like the MC. I'm sure people are gonna be like, oh, he's generic, he's not. Every time I say I like this character, everyone's like, oh, why do you always like the generic characters? I'm sorry, okay? I just like this character. I just think he's fun, right? Like, I like the idea that he is sort of like, he, he's a little tortured, but he's not like crawling in his skin with wounds that will not heal, you know? Uh, fear may be how he falls, but he is falling, confusing what is real. No, um, he, he's not, like, crawling in his skin with wounds that will not heal. Like, he is not edgy for the sake of being edgy, right? Like, he is actually, like, he's a complex character uh, with a lot of, like, he's not complex even. Like, he, he's kind of a simple character with simple motivations, but he has a lot going on beneath the surface. And we do see this pay off later, but it's the idea that he first started to really feel emotions for the first time in a long time, and that threw him off. And he asks, it's, it's why he asks, like, after I'm done with this mission, what do you want from me? And the goddess just said, I don't really care what happens to you after, right? Like, you can just go and live whatever life you feel like, you know? Like, you can do this mission however you feel like. You can go live your life however you feel like once this is over, right? I just need you to do this mission for me, with it, which, if you've forgotten, is kill the hero, right? I swear, <laughs> I, 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 now I can't remember how that friggin' Noragami song. I swear, I something the hero. I've forgotten. Uh, but yeah, he's gonna have to kill the hero, right? Because the thing is, the hero in this world, according to the goddess, is going to start as a hero. Like, he will be heroic. He's gonna do heroic deeds. He's gonna be a good person. But over time, that much power is going to, he's gonna start to kind of get power crazy, right? He's gonna succumb to his own power and end up destroying the world about 18 years from the time our character is reincarnated. Um, and he does ask, what, which I love, he asks, like, if it, is it possible to save the hero? Which I think is really interesting. He, he asks, like, can, uh, like, so the hero, so he has to wait until the hero kills the demon lord, which is going to be 16 years after he's born. So that gives him, like, a really small window of time. He has to train up in those 16 years, maybe even help the hero kill the demon lord, like, maybe even be, like, a party member or something, but then kill him within two years after the demon lord is dead right so after this time of peace that's when our mc luge is, is actually able to fulfill his job in the meantime he's going to spend most of his years training up to the job but the thing that he asks which i find very interesting especially for our character and what we saw last week is that he asks if the only way to complete the job is to kill him and the goddess says no right like that he could be saved right you can save him from falling into sort of madness and if you do that he doesn't have to die because she says like if the hero can be saved too that's just great right but if not then you have to be the one who takes him out so i feel like this puts it in a really interesting place because a it'd be really cool to see him make that choice right where he's going to be forced to make that choice especially if the hero becomes a character that we all like then it, it puts it in this position where suddenly we don't know what the correct answer is because we like the hero maybe even we enjoy the hero hanging out with luge and so it makes it even harder because maybe they become good friends so it sets up for a lot of good drama down the line but it's also good character stuff because at the same time luge as we knew him was this cold-hearted assassin would just kill to get the job done right always focus on the job he wouldn't ask a question like this you know he wouldn't ask if he could save him by befriending him that would never be in his in his mindset but because he's having these emotions again for the first time and who knows when it's really sort of fueling him to push forward and be a good person again. I just think that that's really cool. 
Um, and again, this character in general, I just, I just like him, you know? I will say it hurts seeing him sort of fall into generic anime boy look. Because again, like I said, the, the man was pretty fine, okay? <laughs> The, the the silver fox look was doing it for him. Now he's just like, because we know what he's going to look like. Right now it's different, right? Because right now he's like, I believe the character is supposed to be like seven. So he's just a boy right now, right? Like he's just, he, he's, he's a contender for best boy right now. But when he grows up and we see what he looks like, he just kind of stuck like white haired Kirito. And that kind of sucks, right? Like, and I'm not talking about like, power wise. I'm just talking about like appearance wise, right? It's like, eh, eh, mm. Like, it's not great, it's not bad, it's just sort of there. It's, it's a bummer to me. Because I do think that he was much cooler looking and much more attractive as the older dude. But, like, how are you going to do that? Like, how are you going to bring him over and give him a set number of time? And, ah, like, they had to do this, you know? Uh, the, the one thing I will say, I wish they kept the Seiyu, uh for inner monologues, right? Like, I wish that they kept the, like, the old Luge for the inner monologues. Just because, to me, that makes more sense. Right, like to have his inner monologue be his old voice, because that's how he thinks. He doesn't. He, sh he shouldn't be thinking in this voice that he's hearing come out of his mouth. That should just be the character's voice. His inner monologue should be the assassin, right? Like the one like narrating what's happening. To me, that would have been better. Is if the if Luja's inner voice was still the assassin, like still the old Seiyu, I think that would have been better. But to me, that that's more of a anime decision. Right, because that's not something that the light novel would have covered, right? Like, who is his inner voice? Like, that's definitely an anime decision, and I don't super agree with it. I don't really think that that's how I would have handled it. And I have a feeling, like, even maybe light novel fans might agree that it should have remained the older voice, because that's who he is at the end of the day, right? Um, but still, like, it's there's a lot of good stuff, right? Like, he, we see him being born into the uh, and pronounce. Uh, I'm gonna mispronounce this, so I apologize in advance, but the Twatha Twatha Day family, the Twatha Twatha D Twatha Day, Twatha D family, uh, and he is named Luge, and I didn't need to see this man actually be born. By the way, <laughs> like, I didn't I didn't need to see that. That was kind of yikes. I was like, oh, I don't want to see that. <laughs> like we see him like emerging, you know. It's just like oh, I I didn't need that. Uh, but we also see his father Kian. Uh, swear to Esri, his wife, that they will not lose Luge like they lost Ruff, uh, which indicates that they did have a son previously who was being trained to be an assassin, but something happened. We don't know if he's dead. We just hear lose, right? I don't want to lose him like we lost Ruff. I promise you we will not lose lose our, our a second son. They don't say dead. They say lose. And if you're like me, you know that ain't nobody dead till we see a body. So I'm like, okay, Ruff is probably going to come back in some way, right? We're going to get some sort of like, I don't want to say what, but a My Hero situation, right? It's like, okay, we're getting something like that. Where like, you think this character's dead, they're actually not dead. Um, and I will say like, immediately, Luge is right away badass, like even at seven years old. Like we see that he hasn't been able to use magic yet, but he is like able to shoot a rabbit with a bow and arrow from like a few yards back. Right, even as a seven-year-old, so that's like it's showing how like skilled he is, but it's also showing that he's like really putting a lot of thought into what he's doing, because we see that he, the only reason he even hunted the rabbit in the first place was just to get the right ingredients to make this stew. Like he was gonna make this stew that he knew would give him the nutrients he needs, because while the hero can pretty much probably eat whatever the hell they want, because they have all these skills at their disposal, they don't really have to focus as much on nutrition. Luge does. Like, Luge doesn't have the same number of skills, so he's going to be relying a lot on his own tenacity, right? So he's having to bring in old skills from his past life. Like, we see that he said back in his old life, he had to assassinate this person. In order to do that, he had to get really close. And so he decided to become a cook. And so he learned all these different recipes in order to get close to the mark, right? So that's, that's super cool to see it all sort of come back like to see him use old skills, but also just know that he needs to have good nutrition. Like, it's cool. It's, it's something that you wouldn't think about, right? Like, the idea that, like, he wouldn't have really, like, that you as the viewer would not have thought about the fact that, like, oh, yeah, Luge needs to be on his absolute A game in order to even stand a sliver of a chance of taking down the hero because the hero is going to be crazy strong, right? And he couldn't have been born into a better family because uh, the Twatha, uh, Twatha D 
are sort of the uh, Alvin Kingdom's greatest medical experts, right? They're like doctors, but they're also secretly assassins because they have these like magic eyes, these mystic eyes of Tuatha Dee. And they perceive essentially, like they essentially like perceive both humans' mana, but also give you supervision. Essentially, it's like having a sniper scope at all times. You can just sort of like stare at something and zoom all the way in. Like we see him from his family estate zoom into the forest and through trees to look in to a river and see the fish with crystal clear like vision like it is like that like the mystic eyes thing is is crazy um but i i do again like i really just like the dynamic between him and his family like that dynamic is legitimately very charming because again it just makes sense like given who we've seen the mcb like we've seen him be this hard-boiled absolute badass but that moment of frustration reawakened him to emotions again so he is thinking a lot with his emotions even though he's a much more critical person we see him sort of like enjoying being around his family he even says like the food just sort of tastes better when i'm with them i wonder why that is and it's just because he's enjoying being around a family you can see how much he longed for something like that in his previous life but never had it so like being able to be around his family is good even if esri is kind of weird i'm not gonna lie <laughs> esri is a bit of an odd duck that's his mom she's kind of bizarre but kian is super cool um even though that scene with him sort of like having to inspect uh <laughs> having to inspect luge um by making him do sort of like yoga poses in order to see like his different joints and how that would work with mana it's at first i was like yikes but then i'm like oh okay no i, I understand what's happening because like the way it's framed is you're like ah oh <laughs> Oh, okay, never mind. Now I get what's happening. You had me very concerned for a second. Um, but yeah, like, uh, he's cool. Um, Ezri is a bit weird. I don't like the way that she sort of acts around the MC. It just feels kind of icky. Um, but I will say the introduction of Dia was super cool. Like, the idea that the person who's going to train him is also somebody around about his age, and that does bother her, that she thinks that... that she knows that he's thinking that she's just a kid. Right? So she, like just opens up this pillar of fire in the middle of the estate and is just like hi i'm i'm dia Fie uh i'm dia Fie Fie Kone. nice to meet you right and she just looks like a badass right super super sick uh and it does have me curious like how long we're gonna spend with dia i believe dia is one of the people in the flash forward i think uh before like the big flashback like where we sort of go back to seeing how he enters the world if you remember them like sort of freeing that one ring of people um i would be curious if it is the same person or if this is like a totally different person uh, but she reminds me of the one white-haired mage character so maybe she is either way d is here she's super cool i am very very curious as to where we're going next with this story I, again like i'm just enjoying it a lot more than i thought i would and that's just the thing with isekai right like every every season there's always like one isekai that i'm like this and i just watch it i'm like this is a good time there is a lot of isekai that are not that way that are very boring but this one this is just fun and i like it a lot anyway outro and that's gonna do it for today's video everybody so i hope you guys enjoyed if you did don't forget to boop that up snood share if you care leave a comment down below and of course make sure that you hit that subscribe button ring the bell and set notifications to all let all of any tube know that you're here and of course, before we go, as always, I have to give a big, big thank you to my wonderful masters who help support this endeavor. And of course, I want to give a special, special thank you to the masters of masters who help support us just that little bit more. And I have to give a big thank you to Izevi, Asaki VT, Elizabeth Just Elizabeth, Jcran23, Jeremy P, Matt87 Eagle, Shadow Creative, Shiorans, Stephen G, Stevie W, Trap Master, and Tristan G. Thank you all so much for being so freaking wonderful. I appreciate it. And if you want to hear your name shouted out at the end of these videos, or you want to see your name scrolling past the screen, go ahead and check out the link in the description to our Patreon page, or you can hit that join button right beside the sub button. And that also gets you a badge next to your name as well in the comments if you want people to know how cool you are. But yeah, I'd sincerely appreciate it. It is a great way to help this channel and keep videos coming out. I really, really appreciate it, everyone. And that is it for me. So you guys take care of yourselves. And of course, do clean your room. It's filthy.